Hey, this is JP, and I just want to wish everyone a happy summer. I just got back from lots of summer travelings as it's over 100 degrees in Austin. And one of the things that really moved me was I read a book by a mentor of mine, John Mackey, who is the co-founder of Whole Foods. And it's called The Whole Story. It just came out. And it's John's story, really, how he created as a hippie, from a hippie teenager to someone who created a $29 billion industry called Whole Foods. And we literally changed how we shop and how we eat in America. I just finished the book, and I have to say it left me rather teary-eyed because John was, I had read his book about 15 years ago and heard about this conscious capitalism thing. And he had a book out there on conscious capitalism, and it completely changed the way I thought about business, that business could be for good. A lot of the early ideas that I had once I started making money came from John. And to finish his book, to hear his whole story, how he basically created a company uh, based on love and his heart and all the challenges when you become a $29 billion company, how many people will come at you? Angry shareholders, stockholders, people who want to take your position as CEO and how he each time had to come back to love. And I really see now that I've got to know him personally and who he is, that actually is who he is. And it was really inspiring to me. And um, I wanted to share with you on this episode, just as I, I become more of a mentor to a lot of people who are younger, what it's been like to be mentored by great people like John Mackey, who at the time mentored me just from a book. I did not someone I even knew to actually real, you know, real mentors like my father and several other people in my life that actually mentored me. I just wanted to share with you what it's like, maybe things to ask for, things to look for that um, that mentorship can really do on both sides, to be mentored or to mentor it and pay it forward. You know, one of the things that I'm, that you know, especially it comes from the, um, the podcast is people want to know more information about like, what do I do next? And I find a lot of times the questions that people are asking you, if you listen carefully, it may be the questions they really want to know, or there may be a question behind it, if you just kind of take the time to 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 get to know them. A lot of times, I think, again, we, we form our questions or our ideas of what we think we want from our head, and they don't always come from that deepest why. Um, I found many times that when I mentor, um, one recent example um, was a person who was young, doing really, really well, making, you know, almost, almost six digits a month, uh, placing ads, and uh, he came in with the question of, what do I do with this money? Like, what do I do next with this money? I've made it. How do I how do I solve, how do I save it long term? What do I do with it now that I've made it? And the real question I think he really wanted to know, he just didn't know it as we got to know each other better, was how to live a life of decency and respect and peace because he wasn't having that experience of peace or joy or happiness at that point. So I would just say that like for those who I mentor and for those of you who are looking, you know, depending where you're at in your life of mentorship, listen carefully. And uh, a lot of times the answer is a blended, you know, information with how it best applies to that person. I think we all know between the internet and chat GPT, if it's just about data, you can get it anywhere. You don't really need a mentor to get data. What you really need is that wisdom and that emotional intelligence of how it applies uniquely to that person. And I find that that really is what makes a great mentor. You know, I'll, I'll just tell you, like, again, just from reading uh, John Mackey's book for me, the idea that business could be for good, it was one of the first times I'd ever heard it. It was actually Peter Diamantis and John Mackey, both of them saying that you can actually make more money by, by really running a great business um, were completely mind-blowing concepts because I always thought that money and business was a zero-sum game. You're just trying to earn it. You know, you don't really care how you do it as far as you just you follow your master plan, your goal, and there you are. And as you guys know, if you've been listening to my episodes, I believe if you just try to seek money from that perspective of uh, how without the why, it'll be a really empty victory. The idea of actually a full-bodied, four-dimensional wealth, which is what we're talking more and more about, that, that embodies your, your health, your communities, your friendships, your purpose, all within your economic status, all blended together in the right thing, and also with vision of living your best life and knowing that you're living within your purpose is what true wealth and abundance is all about. As I've gotten older and had many mentors in my life who've helped me ask hard questions, there is a process to how I do it. And, um, you know, a lot of times, first of all, uh, I really make sure it's a, it's a question that I can't answer myself. And so usually for me, if it's a problem or a question that I really just know after thinking about it that I didn't really know how to solve or don't have a complete answer to an important question, I think about either someone personally in my life or someone in my outer circle who might know someone or even going to the third ring of just, uh, you know, maybe it's someone that I don't know yet. Maybe it's a Brene Brown, maybe it's someone but I try to find the answer uh, 
in terms of who is the right person. And usually there's someone in your network, if you really think about it, that is that right person or is knows that right person. Uh, and then I typically, I'm really clear on what the question's gonna be. I come in with kind of an openness and curiosity, but I really generally know what it is that I'm trying to get answered. Um, and when I approach that person, whether it's a friend of mine or it's from that second ring, I think when you come to someone um, in vulnerability and openness and they see that you're willing not only to listen to what they have to say, like you're, you're actually there to listen. Because I do think there's some people who just like, they're almost like question junkies. They just love to ask questions, but then when you give them the answer, they don't actually follow what you're saying. And I try to avoid those people as far as mentoring them. But I think for, if you generally are someone that's showing a, that you have a genuine question, you're genuinely willing to listen and you're willing to do the work, I think most people will respond to that. And again, if it's someone that you don't have access to, or maybe it's too big, um, then maybe you have to go to their podcast or maybe you have to get slices from, from their podcast or their books, and that'll still get you to the, to the right answer. So, um, that's worked really, really well for me. I'm trying to think of a recent thing. Well, I mean, even like right now, I'm, I've just signed up for, uh, Joe Dispenza. For those of you who don't know Joe Dispenza, Joe Dispenza is one of the top best New York Times bestselling authors for uh, um, I'm Not the Placebo and one of the best meditation instructors they say in the world. And I've really been stuck on how to get my meditation practice to the next level. I feel like uh, sometimes I joke and say I'm like a first grader trying to get to second grade when it comes to that practice. And the reason why that's important to me is how do you take all this wonderful stuff of 4D wealth and having all these great things and then even baking it in deeper with more wisdom and more presence. So next week I'm actually going, I've been, this is something I've wanted to do for two or three years. And after trying many techniques, I really feel like Joe's like my next spot. And uh, I actually went for mentorship yesterday with Tristan, who some of you might know from my podcast. And Tristan had been to Dr. Joe and it's a very hard, it's seven days, it's hours and hours. You wake up at 3.15 AM. I mean, this is gonna be like meditation boot camp. And I'm not actually looking forward to it. I mean, who wants to wake up at 3.15 and meditate for, for seven hours? But I also know that I'm really hungry and I'm willing to do the work for the goal that I want to do, which is that deeper presence and deeper intuition, even like taking it to the next level. And uh, it's funny, I said to Tristan, I had this whole thing, Tristan, well, how do I approach Dr. Joe? And like, you've been there. I really trust you. You're one of the best meditators that I know. Like, what do I do? What, what angle? Like, what book should I read ahead of time? And Tristan kind of laughed at me yesterday and he said, you're overthinking it. He's like, go in and know that in your life at this point, all you're trying to do is make incremental improvements. You're not trying to like, you may be blown away with a holy shit. Like I learned this and I'm totally gone. Now I'm, now I'm in a college graduate. Maybe it'll be that, ex that exciting, but maybe you'll pull away one or two things that took you from first grade to second or third grade. And then the next thing, you'll figure out the next mentor or the next angle that'll get you to the next step. But he says, just, Size it down. You know so much. You've, you, you've taken so much. And sometimes in life, taking things in bite-sized chunks is the way to go. So that's just something like this week of how I use my friendships and mentorships to, to level up on things that are really important to me, both personally and in business. You know, if I could go back to my 35-year-old self that uh, was looking to study the, a lot of questions a lot of times and didn't exactly know my path and was a lot less steady on my footing, you know, I'd really go back. You know, first of all, I always say I'd, I'd want to reassure that 35-year-old <laughs> that it's all great from that moment on. Like, even if it doesn't look great, even if it feels messy in your head, sometimes to give yourself more ease and grace, I think is always the number one thing that I, that I would say going back to my 35 year old self. But then also, um, it's really important to maybe ask bigger questions. Like again, I, I would say to you right now, if you're stuck, let's say you're doing great, but you're stuck on a certain issue or a certain part of your business that isn't working, no matter how hard you try, or it's a relationship or whatever it is that you just know you're, you're kind of stuck and you've been stuck for a while. Um, take a moment and really think about, because there's probably someone that it's not, it may not be the most obvious person. There's someone in your network or your outer network that absolutely has gone through that experience and can help you. So half the battle is actually realizing and taking a moment to say, who is it? Asking the question, who is it in my network that probably could answer that question for me in a way that maybe I wouldn't expect. Stay away from what you think you know the answer is. Like that's that's your mind. Like try to come up with something that might be, have a completely contradictory way of looking at something or just a completely abstract way that's not your way because in that angle is where you might find the answer. Uh, have the courage, but be prepared. Have the courage to do the ask uh, with vulnerability, you know, with, with clarity, 
and with showing that you're willing to do the work and listening and listen more than speaking is really great. And I think if you come in with that humbleness, if you come in with that clarity, that humbleness, and also knowing what you actually want to accomplish, not just how do I fix X, but if I fix X, I can probably get to the next step, which would be this. So it's like you're thinking about it in a larger way. So in other words, not only how do I fix that exact problem, although it could be that mechanically, but what will it lead to? And then what, what, what might the next step look like that I'd have to face or look at or improve in order to kind of to get past this, to get to the next level? Because usually on most of these things, there are journeys and you're going step by step. So you might even want to look a step or two ahead at what it is and even ask that question if that person might have the answer. I find a lot of times mentors know more than you think, and it's really your questions and your energy that'll make the difference of how much value you get out of those relationships. So I think I would just end with that. Whatever it is, just know um, it's all great. It's all part of life's journey and purpose. And uh, I appreciate you listening. I hope it helps. And uh, just know step by step, that's how, that's how life works. And as Nike says, there is no finish line. So just keep enjoying the process. It gets more fun and more, more easy and more interesting um, as, as you build your networks and your friendships. And it's really fun when you get to the point that you get to pay it forward because now you have enough life experience that you can actually shed some of those challenges that you had, you're able to share with someone younger than we, than with you, who's going through the same problem and helping them uh, solve that problem. So that being said, I hope everyone's having a great summer and uh, we'll see you soon on the next episode of Investing on Purpose. Thank you for listening.